come on. We're here celebrating the birth of Christ. Let's celebrate Jesus. Everybody. together give God a praise as you stand this morning I want you to bow your heads with me oh eternal God the righteous one of Israel and all the earth Lord we bow once again in humble submission to your will we bow with a heart that is yet grateful and filled with praise for you. Lord, we thank you for the benefit of our faith that is prospering into eternal life. All because on that fateful day, you gave us the best that you had. And he gave his life on our behalf. Now, my Father, we're here today that we might be able to bring honor and praise unto you. We are here today, dear Lord, that our strength might be made evident in our walk and in our life, and that others might be able to, through the spiritual transparency of our faith, see the good that comes in knowing you. Now, Lord, we thank you for the gathering. You said where two or three would be gathered, you would be in the midst. And Lord, we feel like on this day we have exceeded that number. And we know that if you'll stand with us, you are more than the world against us. And Lord, for the moments that we spend here gathered together in your name, let your spirit run rampant in this place. Bring joy to those that are depressed. Encourage the faint-hearted. And oh God, we pray that you will magnify your grace among your people. And this we will be eternally grateful for. And give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We ask it all in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and look him in the eye and say, I love you. I love and there's not a thing in the world you can do about it. Come on, share that with someone else. Share it with somebody else. Now, don't be afraid. I want, you, I want you to give somebody a high five or a fist bump only if you can now. Only if you can. 
Yes. Yes. We come to praise him today. We come to worship him today. He's worthy to be praised. Somebody ought to just say hallelujah. Come on, say it like you meant to say it. Hallelujah. If he's been good to you, go ahead and thank the Lord because he's worthy to be praised. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say he's a mighty God. I heard that. How many know that he's a mighty God? Come on. You ought to trust the Lord today. You ought to thank the Lord today. There's no strings attached to his goodness. No one can rescind the benefit of his grace upon his people. I want you to sing this song with us and then I'm going to open the floor for those of you. We're getting close to year in. You might want to give God a verbal praise today. But let us sing it together right now.
I just <clears throat> want to thank God for my life today. Thank God for Holy Chapel. I especially thank God he has kept our pastor strong through all that has gone on this past year. I thank him that he's kept my, my sisters, my two sick sisters, they're still here. And I'm just hoping and trusting that we open up our hearts and our minds so that we can accept all the promises that God has for us. Amen. And I'm just hoping that Holy Chapel just gets stronger and stronger and that he continues to bless and strengthen our pastor and the entire church congregation. I want to just give hallelujah thanks for today. God bless you all. Thank you. Amen. Down front. Amen. Amen. We got some grateful folk in the house today. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Bless you, darling. Amen. 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 Morning. Morning. Giving reverence to God, Pastor Tom, thank you all of you. I am just thankful to be here today. You know, I always say it's a good day if I woke up and was able to walk here. So I'm just grateful to be here, but I'm so grateful for my family. Uh, I was blessed with a great grandbaby this year, and she is such a joy. <laughs> and I'm just thankful for my Holy Chapel Church family. I don't have any family here except my two children and my grandchildren. But uh, you all are my family, and you love on me uh, like I am your sister. 
So I just, I'm just grateful and thankful for God just for being so good to me because, whew, just yesterday, I received a check in the mail that I didn't even expect. And so, you know, when you do good and give to God, uh, give to others as God gives to you, he continuously blesses you. So I'm just grateful to be here this morning. And I also want to speak on behalf of uh, Sister Lucia Dixon, one of our um, hospitality committee persons. Amen. She sent a letter. She's uh, up in age. I think she's like 89 or 90. And she's a sweetheart. And so she wrote a letter uh, and asked that it be read to Pastor Thomas and Holy Chapel family. During this time of year, we are all so grateful to my Almighty God for all his blessings. I am grateful to you, Holy Chapel family, for your cards, prayers, gifts, etc. this past year. Because of my condition, I am not able to send cards. I love you all dearly and wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Love you all, Lucille Dixon. And I say, love you all, Marjorie Young. Thank Amen. You. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was raining or what, but we all got to give him praise. We Amen. Got to stand there for our God. And he's still there for us. You know, we to give him thanks. And he's the reason he put the food on the table so I could cook. You know. So I want to give him all the praise on in the world and Pastor Thomas. Bless you. I want to thank you for being my pastor. You are a loving and a kind and the giving words that you say make a person think. So I know you're a man of God, you know. God bless you. And uh, I'm going to thank my Holy Chapel family and everybody. So God bless you and Merry Christmas to everybody. Amen. Good morning, Holy Chapel family. Good morning. Um, how many of you believe in miracles? Amen. God is able and very capable, and I give honor and glory to him, and I know he is in control of my life. There is never any defeat, any upset anymore. And I have to thank Pastor Thomas for that because it was a real evolution for me, a real journey. But I want to say this, 23 and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Oh my. I had last doctor's visit and my doctor said, Charmaine, your cancer counts have gone from 20 600 to negative five. Wow. He is not capable. And he is not able. Hallelujah. 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 And I have to thank him for my husband, who has just been the biggest cheerleader. And he's been there. He never missed a day of treatment. He missed one day when I had a bone marrow transplant. He had the flu. I don't know what he did, but he was there the next day. 
and he did not have the flu anymore. But when I say God is good, when you live right, <laughs> okay, you treat people right, he takes care of you. And I love all of you for your hugs, your prayers, and I ask that you continue praying because every day is still a journey for me, but I give him all honor and praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't this wonderful? Amen. Amen. You know, as we prepare for our next speaker, I want you to also remember uh, that testimonies and witnesses like this are needed throughout the year. Somebody need to know where our help comes from. Amen. Don't be ashamed. Sister Riles. I'm going to thank God. We're diagnosed with COVID-19 in January of this year. David was blessed with six weeks of outpatient treatment and came through like a trooper, thank God, because the old girl here didn't fare so well. Um, was in the hospital twice for, two, for a week at a time, five months of not being able to do anything for myself. I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk, I couldn't write, I couldn't read. The memory still is not where it's supposed to be, but thank God that we're on this side of the COVID statistics. Amen. I just want to tell everybody, this disease is not a joke. I have continuing, continuing lung um, depreciation. Uh, when I was sick, look in the mirror, you didn't recognize yourself because your skin tone has changed, your lips were blue, you didn't see yourself. But God is good. All the time. All the time. <laughs> All the time. All the time. I want to thank my Holy Chapel family. The Southern School Class 102, these ladies, Sister Essie, Sister Faye, Sister Riley, I don't want to miss anybody, but if I don't call your name, it's not to my heart, it's to my head. Dick and Riley calling to check on David. We appreciate you so much. When the pastor called, he said, why didn't you tell me I, you were so sick? I said, you were going through your own trials. I was praying for you, but I knew you were praying for me. Amen. And I thank God for all, everything he's done for me, what he's continued to do for me and David. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Holy Chapel. Good morning. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord once again. Your family, because we are family. Your church family. I love you and thank you all. Pastor, I'm the pastor to the Lord. I love all of you and I thank you for all of your prayers. And I pray, I know you will keep them going. I've been through a lot, but then God has control over it all. And he get, doesn't give us no more than we can bear. Yes. And I've been through it, but I thank you. And I you know I smile all the time. It's my madam frowning. So most of smiles. And I love you, and I thank you for your prayers. And my husband is not into the word like I am, but just keep praying for us all. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. I give on to God. 
God who is the head of my life and I honor my pastor, all my sisters and brothers in the Lord. I thank and praise God for being here this morning. I thank God for life. Uh, I don't have a testimony of being ill, and that's what my testimony is. Is that God has kept me well and kept me Hallelujah. Safe and kept my household and kept me up that I can pray for those that are going through whatever they are going through. And that is my testimony of victory. When my sisters and brothers have, have a testimony of victory, I thank and praise God for that. Thank God for the healings that He's uh, blessed us with in this church alone. Uh, I don't say a whole lot of testifying too often. Publicly. But the word tells us that we overcome by the words of our testimony in the blood of the Lamb. And I thank and praise God that uh, I am an overcomer, you know, and, and I am a, I am victorious, you know, in this life. I'm not to say that I'll never be down, I'll never be ill, but I know one thing is that if ever I am, I know you got my, I know you got me. Yes. Because I've got you, amen. Right Amen. I praise God for all of his blessings. And I love this church and I thank God for how he's prospering us in this church. And uh, I just love the Lord today. I love the Lord with my whole life, my whole mind, my whole body. I love him. Praise God. And I pray that you continue to uh, pray for me as well. And God bless you all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Oh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Uh, I'm just glad to be here another year. I'm glad that I have a church family, a church home, and just to acknowledge God that he came. Like Pastor said, may not have been today, but he did come. And I just thought about how lonely and, you know, he's a king. And he didn't have to come as lonely as he did to show us that he came all the way down just to show us that it can be accomplished. Um, this song's been on my mind. I'm just gonna sing a little bit of it because I've been, I just wanted to sing it for you. Let me just sing a little bit. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Oh, holy night, the stars are bright, we shine. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Amen. 
Amen. We'll be wrapping up in the next three minutes or so. So if you have a testimony, we have one behind us as well. Good morning, Hotel. Good morning. Give it all reverence to God. Keep the head of my life, Captain Thomas. Bless you, darling. Give you, my sister and brother. You know, this time last year, my husband was laying in the house. One of them, like, and I was praying every day, asking the Lord, please, heal him and bring him back home. But God is still good. Amen. He found that it was best for him to be with him. He's no longer suffering. And I thank God for that. I want to thank you for all the prayers, all the support for me and Brian for doing it. Huh? I sat here and I struggled. <laughs> it's very hard to speak about. <laughs> but I just want to thank you for your heart, your love, all your care packages that I received. And even up to this day, you still show that you can. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and I meant to God to uh, pass the to to uh, you, my brother, just in Christ. Uh, my wife didn't speak, but she hadn't uh, had any medical issues. But uh, a few months back, I had an MRI and uh, they discovered I had a tumor in my brain. And uh, they started me on some medication. The uh, 21st of December, I uh, had uh, an appointment with my doctor. And uh, he uh, uh, asked some questions because uh, I had to take a blood test prior to this. And the levels had came down uh, to where they were going to rain. How was the uh, pain? And the medication was working so well that I didn't even realize I hadn't had the pain. So he said the tumor is shrinking and that uh, you know, do another MR body. And uh, so God is good. And I'm sure that everything will be fine. Amen. I think that was the only man we had. Oh, here we go. We got another one to represent, Deacon. Amen. We got to get on record. Okay. Good morning, church. Good morning. God is good, isn't he? <laughs> so I don't think he's ready for me yet. <laughs> and one other thing, too, is uh, I got a brother and a sister-in-law in South Carolina. They both got cancer. She got brain cancer. I think he, got, he had took a prostate cancer about 20 years ago. And it came back and went to his bones. And they he was going to the VA. So one day they just decided that there was nothing else they could do for him. So they, they wanted to put him in a, a hospital. 
And she worried when you at home. So she can take care of it. Although she's uh, got this problem herself, she, she still takes the function pretty well. But since he's been home, she said, Now he, when he first came in, he couldn't even walk. He had to help him through the bed and he had lost a lot of weight. But she said, Now he gets up, he walks around without his walker. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> so I just want to say I thank all you guys for well, a lot of you didn't know that I had this problem, but anyway, I, I appreciate you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Deacon. Well, we're going to allow Reverend Porter to come at this time, and then we will prepare to conclude this segment. Give an honor to God, much love and respect to Pastor, to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. As I said and listened at the testimony, when my mind went back to this time of the year in the very early 60s, my life had deteriorated. When they sing that song, Silent Night, I recall trying to sleep in a doorway while it was raining. And they were singing, silent night. And I knew that if I kept praying, he would lift me out of the rut that I was in. So I thank him right now that he's brought me out. He's brought me through a pandemic. He's brought me through a lot of trials, but he's still good. And I thank him. And he's let me go to have a birthday on the 5th of January. I'm not going to tell you how old I am. You got to figure that out for yourself. But God is good. Amen. I believe that you all have come for the right reason. You know, uh, it's hard to get folk out uh, on an inclement day like today. But you came because somebody here loves Jesus. Do I have a witness? So as the choir prepared to come with the selection, let me say this. God has also been good to me. Personally, this has been one of the most difficult years that I've ever experienced. I've gone through and been through the irony of all the uh, contagious viruses that plagued us throughout the season and then to have to so early in the year release one that I loved so dearly for so many years the only solace I have is that I know where she is and she's in a good place. I just trust and pray that the Lord will continue to give me strength to serve out the calling of my mission here. And I have no doubt about it. That's why I want you to feel comfortable. I have no doubt about it. Jesus is coming back again. Can I get a witness? And because he's coming back again, I look forward with great anticipation to this grand reunion of the saints and being able to be joined again with many of the dear hearts that have gone on before us. And so I encourage you and I thank you for your prayers because where there's prayers, there is strength. Look at your neighbor and say, we can get through this thing. Come on, say it with conviction. 
we can get through this. If God is for us, he's more than the world against us. Yes. While you're trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Please receive our choir.
give our choir some love. We all, we're always thankful for their faithful ministry. It encourages our hearts that we might be prepared to receive the word of God. Out of the second chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke, I would like to read into your hearing verses 10 through 14. When you found that place, just respond by saying amen. amen. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be the sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. I want to talk briefly from this subject matter today the keeping of the promise. God bless you. The keeping of the promise. We're living in a day and in a time where it's not unusual for men to promise you everything and then in return give you very little, if anything. But we serve a God today, and that's why we're here, to give him glory because he's a promise keeper. There's nothing that he can promise that he's not able to bring to pass. And as I looked at our text today in preparation for our celebration, I go back to the idea that this should not be of any real surprise to any of us. We serve a God uh, that is sovereign. He is completely omnipotent. He has all power to do all things. We serve a God that is, of course, omniscient. There's nothing you can tell him that he does not already know. Do I have a witness? We serve a God that is omnipresent. That means that even though he may not come when you want him, he does know how to be on time. Do I have a witness? So I say in like manner, as I've all times said, uh, while you're trying to figure this thing out, Actually, God has already worked it out. Just a few days ago, we had uh, okay, catechizing in uh, the prophetic word of Isaiah, how Isaiah went through several things at a time that was quite demeaning and debilitating for most. However, in that transition, Isaiah discovered something. Uh, he said it was in the year, remember, that as I died, that I too saw the Lord. What we're here to celebrate today is the fact that 
Isaiah, in spite of his trials and in spite of the devastation of world events of his day, God gave him vision to see through some things. And if you can recall in the ninth chapter, he said emphatically that the people that walked in darkness have now seen a great light. They that dwelled in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shined. We're here today. We're here today not because we were compelled by men, but by the Spirit of God, we were compelled to respond to the grace and goodness of God. No matter how dark this year has been for some, we're here because we were able to wake up and see the light. Do I have a witness? And, and for this reason, while others might uh, have the tendency to be distracted by the secular version of our celebratory methods, I start by to remind you once again in passing that today, I don't care what day he was born, but we are gathering today because he was born, amen. And, and, and this is not anything that can be uh, manufactured uh, in the department stores. Uh, it, it, you cannot afford to have a synthetic version of truth. Uh, synthetic truth is a lie. Do I have a witness? But we serve a God that can do anything but fail. And I stop to remind you that he is still worthy to be praised. You know, a lot of folk go to church today for a lot of different reasons, and a lot of folk celebrate Christmas for a lot of different reasons. Uh, there are homes that are uh, actually worshiping trees and Lord, help me, what possibly would lie under the tree? But today, we're celebrating a person who, because of our sin, not only carried our burdens, but hung on a tree and died for our sins. Yeah. Amen. And so this vision that Isaiah had was not something that was just offered to him. If you look closely, you'll find where the angel said unto them, them being those that were shepherds in the field. He said, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Now, that's important as I... Uh, scurry through these passages that we might be able to expedite time itself. Uh, but Christ did not die for some of us. He died for all of us. The irony is that only some of us are prepared to receive the truth of the gift itself. And to those who have ears to hear, the Bible say, let them hear. And those that hear realizes that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so the irony of our faith, the doctrine of our uh, catechism, the uh, um, pedagogy of our quest is something that is not contingent upon our ability to bring to pass. Somebody said, well, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Well, you see, that's, 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 that's uh, erroneous because that's not how God works. If God says it, it is settled. It's just the onus is on you to believe it. Do I have a witness? 
We're, we're, we're living in a trying time, a time of perpetual crises where uh, we, we, we're argumentative over things that have little value to the person themselves. We argue, we argue across the land and expect for the Supreme Court to make decisions on our behalf that God has already made before we even got here. Are, are you with me? De de decision, decisions, and I know that uh, some of them are irritating your spirits to a degree, but you need to know who Jesus is. You need to know who God is. We, we, we're pushing things that God has already settled before a court of men and women that has no idea of the strength or power of God himself. You see, we from Texas across the nation now, we, we're, we're fighting over uh, whether or not we are pro-life. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying. But let me tell you something. Uh, God is neither pro-life or pro-choice. Uh-oh. Let me say it again. I said God. Somebody say God. God is neither pro-life nor pro-choice. He's both of them at the same time. Now listen to me well. I know that it sounds quite contradictory, but I said he's both. How can he be both? That's because when he made you, he made you a free will agent. Do I have a witness? And regardless to how you look at it, God himself must be pro-life because he made you. And he must be pro-choice because he gave you the right to decide. I wish I had a witness. <laughs> and, so, and so whether it's right or wrong, the day is going to come where grandmother would say every tub is going to sit on his own bottom. <laughs> and so things that we wrestle with today are, 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 are virtually insignificant with the rule of God, who is the King of King and the Lord of Lords. It's here, it's here, it's here in this second chapter of Luke, where, where, where Luke, uh, the doctor, the doctor, Dr. Luke, he says in verse 8, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. But now look at verse 10. The angel said, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of joy, which shall be to all people. Why do you call it good? One is because God said it. It had already been prophesied. But the angel came and confirmed the fact that unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. Well, I want you to look at that verse number 11 when he says, unto you is born this day in the city of David. Well, actually, uh, the city of David was a city, in fact, on the southern slope of Mount Zion. Jesus 
was not born in the city of David. Jesus was born in the city that David was born in. It's called Bethlehem. I wish I had a witness. And the lineage of the gospel truth is that the king that would come would be a successor of David who was born in Bethlehem. Subsequently, they did name a city after David, but that's not where Jesus was born. Jesus was born where David was born. Somebody say in Bethlehem. And so in Bethlehem, uh, Christ the Savior was offered. And the angel said, this shall be a sign unto you. You should find him wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. I wish I had a witness. <laughs> and, 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 and suddenly, so suddenly, in your verse 13, uh, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. Do I have a witness? The angel said, and on earth there shall be peace and goodwill towards men. And it came to pass that as the angels were gone away from heaven, uh, gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. Yes, there's a reason why this message was given on this day, regardless to what day it was. It was emblematic of the promise keeper who is too wise to even make one mistake. While we were at our worst, he was operating at his best. While others was looking at us for our shortcoming, he saw the good in us, while others only saw the bad in us. And you know, there are some folk today that even have the tendency, once they realize that we are not without sin, we are without penalty, but not without sin, we have the tendency to accentuate the same. I want you to know that we have a new life now in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Do I have a witness? And so and so is here where we look in this particular verse and we find out that Christ the Savior is born. He was called Savior only in two places in the Bible. One is where we just got through reading, and the other is in the fourth chapter of John, where many who believed uh, because of his word, that's verses 41 and 42, they said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy saying, Hmm. For we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now, in closing, I need you to be reminded that that which we fear the most has the propensity to be the greatest blessing that the world has ever known. You may not like it. But we'll all be leaving here. Help me, somebody. We came here leaving here. So it's no mystery that we're going to leave. The question is, where would we reside? Oh, I stop by to remind you that Jesus said, I got a place. I wish I had a witness. Look at your neighbor and say, and it's mortgage free. 
I got a place for you. Jesus said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have been the one to tell you. Jesus said, I'm going, Lord, help me to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, I wish I had a witness. There you can be. And so we glorify God today because even in devastating times such as we are experiencing today, we know that if God is for us, he's more than the world against us. We know that is nothing that is impossible for him to do. Paul, I believe it was said in the eighth chapter of Romans, he said all things work together for good. For those that love the Lord and for those that are called according to his purpose. Do I have a witness here? I came out this morning not, 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 not to be impressive for men. I came out to show God some thanks because he brought me through a few things. I came out not because I couldn't stay at home like some others. I came out not because I was afraid of the water or the rain, but I came out because when I was at my worst, God was working at his best. I came out because the angel said, uh, fear not. Do I have a witness? I bring you good tidings of great joy. Is that right? I don't mean any harm, but the Bible didn't say I just bring you good tidings, but I bring you good tidings of great joy. Uh, that's because when Jesus comes, all of your sins will now be paid for. When Jesus comes, uh, the very prophecy of the Old Testament take on flesh and blood and the bible said he became flesh and dwelled among us do i have a witness i don't mean any harm here but as i close when i think about how jesus gave up his sinless life for sinners like you and me my soul <laughs> cry out thank you my soul want to magnify the Lord because he's been just that good to me. Am I right about it? My soul has no problem identifying with the word and the will of God because God has been through many things on our very behalf. He's been a friend for the friendless. He's been water in dry places. I wish I had a witness in the house. He's been food on a hungry table all on. He's been a mighty good savior and an awesome God. And I stopped by this morning because when my eyes flew open, no matter what day it was, uh, I saw another day uh, that's been coming ever since the beginning of creation. Yet it is a day uh, that I've never seen before. Uh, is that right? Uh, and I heard uh, the Bible said, this is the day uh, that the Lord has made. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, and yeah. Everybody ought to be willing to rejoice and make glad your hope in him. Is that right? But one Friday evening when the world was dark, I wish I had a witness in the house. The Bible said he died that we might have the right to the tree of life. One Friday evening when the world love, the world responded responded and said crucify him is that right but on a tree on the top of the hill I heard they stretched him wide hung him high and dropped him low and there on Calvary here's what I'm really glad about he cried out find 
Father, I want you to forgive them because they know not what they do. Am I right about it? He hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and he yielded up his very life. Is that right? They buried him in a borrowed tomb, but the grave could not hold him down. Early Sunday morning, I wish I had one or two witnesses in the house. The Bible said he got up with all power, all on, even in his hand. And as I go to my seat now, I want to ask one question. Who will testify and give him the glory? Is that right? Who will? The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord show some sign. Is that right? He said, everything that has breath ought to be praising him. Even right now, he held us through COVID-19. He brought us great God through every mutation and even through Delta and even through Omicron and he's keep on blessing. He's just like the Energizer Bunny. Just like the Bunny. He just keep on keeping on. Isn't God alright? I said, isn't God alright? He just keep on blessing us. Look at your neighbor and say over and over, over and over, God keep on blessing us. Is that right? I heard, I tell you, I heard when he got up, he said, all power is in my hand. Isn't God all right? I heard, I tell you, I heard God charged the church. He said, go ye therefore to all the world uh, and preach uh, and teach uh, and baptize uh, in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and uh, in the name of the Holy Ghost uh, and lo, uh, I'll be with you uh, always uh, even to the end of the world uh, isn't God alright uh, I said yes uh, God is uh, my help uh, in time of need uh, God is uh, my joy uh, in time of sorrow every time uh, I turn around uh, yes uh, he just keep on blessing me uh, is that all right uh, I heard, I tell you, I heard, you ought to lean now on the promises of God. He's worthy to be praised. Isn't God all right? I said, isn't God all right? Yes. 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 I got my health. I got my strength because the Savior lives he lives, he lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you stand with me? God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, we do confess today that there's none like you. We thank you for this golden opportunity, this privilege once again, to acknowledge where our help truly comes from. Lord, as we prepare to leave this place, we pray that your grace will tarry with us Blessing our homes and our families, and blessing even the church of which we are proud to be members of, the body of Christ. Having known Jesus in the word, having risen from the dead, we remember that fateful evening 
when he broke bread with us and said, eat, this is my body. When he took a cup and blessed it and passed it and said, drink ye all of it. This is my blood which was shed for you. And then before he left, he said, I want you to do this in remembrance of me. And today, O oh Lord, we bow our heads in humble submission to your word. And to your will, O oh God, we offer you this table as a spiritual sacrifice to the testament of your good will for all men. Bless the bread that it might remind us dearly of your broken body. Bless the cup that it might remind us that you bled profusely to make it available. Now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we ask it all with great thanksgiving in our hearts. And every believer just responded by saying amen, 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 amen. and amen. Sister Deaconess, will you come and provide attendance at the table? <laughs>